voices that did comfort me furthest from my sanity come from places I had never seen Hello Nico, it's good to hear from you. Hey, it's Mick and Peter on the War Room. Top of the hour, Boomer and Thistle come your way with the point. Dissecting hockey as only they can. And we're doing what we can here in the War Room. Thanks to Timo Seppo for stepping in. We'll get back to the phones tomorrow. Peter, we need a topic for tomorrow. We'll see what happens tonight. I'm fresh out, man. It's like you said, let's just get to the final 10 games and do the push, the real push, and get to the playoffs. But before we do that, there I mean, are some teams that are on the bubble, though, Peter. The yeah, Kings are definitely. one of those teams, right? They won 4-0 last night, taking on an anemic Minnesota Wild. But the Kings have been anemic this season, historically and since the lockout, with not scoring goals. They did the Jeff Carter deal. Uh, and they've reunited, uh, you know, Mike Richards and Jeff Carter. And our, our next guest has had a lot to say about that <laughs> on his website. So keep it clean. <laughs> <laughs> the Royal Half is a website you can find at theroyalhalf.com. Confessions of an L.A. Kings half-season ticket holder. Now, 43 seasons without the Stanley Cup. We don't know this dude's name. We've had him on before. We'll have him on again. We'll just call him Mr. Royal. How you doing, Mr. Royal? Hey, guys. How are you? Are you in a good mood because your team actually scored like three goals in one period last night? Well, you should see the parade that was being thrown down Figueroa Avenue because the Kings beat the 22nd overall team with the 29th best offense last night. Hey, I live in Toronto. I'm used to those parades, so I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> you celebrate when you can, right? Exactly. It's the little things, the little things. Okay, so let's. Uh, we haven't talked to you for most of the season. How has it been being a Kings fan this season when for a number of years you've been told there's this slow build, we've got patience here, Mr. Lombardi, is putting this team together, don't worry, it's all going to pay off, and then you get sort of this thud. You might still make the playoffs, but, man, you're, you're going to be limping in. Well, I think if you're a longtime Kings fan, you're not surprised. You know, this is a team that had Gretzky for eight years, and the best we could do was, was losing, you know, 4-1 to one in the Stanley Cup Finals to the Canadians. At least you got there. <laughs> At least we got there, right. Yeah. Um, you know, I think there was so much expectation and hope and promise at the start of the season. And the top six, the top six, each one of those guys had at least scored 30 goals in a season. And, you know, now our, our playoff hopes rest on uh, Dwight King, Jordan Nolan, and Jeff Carter. Well, what do you make of the Carter deal? You know, I think Carter, in his first game against Chicago, which was a 4 nothing win, he drove to the net, he was aggressive, um, really great shot, shot selection on net, and then within one game had kind of adapted to the L.A. King system and was a timid perimeter player and is now kind of just floating around the edge uh, uh, with everyone else. Um, you know, three games, no points. He's had a couple chances on net, but um, I don't think any of us have seen anything spectacular yet as he kind of gets adjusted to the system. And you have a great feature going Carter versus Carter, the Anson Carter who played, what, 15 games for the team and had one assist. You're, you've got the, the see the comparison going, I think Jeff Carter's going to end up some more points and goals. Uh, even though I know what you're saying about last night's game, you know, he's the kind of guy that can score when you don't expect it because he does have talent. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and, and uh, you know, I think the hopes for Carter is that, you know, he and his best friend Richards will, will, will click and, and eventually, you know, continue the Flyers West tradition in Los Angeles and, and, and get this team in the playoffs. But as you, as you open up with, I don't know what this team's going to do in the playoffs. They're going to they're play Detroit or, or St. Louis in the first round and, and, and be a third consecutive year of a, of a first round loss. Yeah. Could be. I, know, much. I understand that. But uh, Mr. Half, what do you think make of uh, Mr. Half? <laughs> Mr. Half, what do you th- what do you make of the potential or the talk was out there last week that the captain, Mr. Brown, was going to get dealt to to whoever to a couple of teams, and then all of a sudden backtracked on that, or at least Dean Lombardi said, you know, we're not really looking to trade him, but we're looking at offers, and then he bounces back the next game and scores a hat trick. Well, Dustin Brown has seven points um, in the three games since his name kind of got floated. And I kind of wish that D. Lombardi had put Drew Doughty, Andre Kopitar, Mike Richards, Jared Wholesale, Stoltz, right. on the trading block because um, it's obviously motivated him. You know, Dustin Brown is, is, is well-loved in Los Angeles. He's the captain. But I think that with the crazy trades that were going on and, and the, you know, Alex Hemsky getting $5 million a year, and uh, if I was the GM, how could you not listen to an offer for Dustin Brown? You know, and, and I think the problem was Dustin Brown is one of our better right. top six forwards. So if you were going to trade him, you were going to have to get at least two forwards that could score back if you're going to lose one of your, your better scoring guys. Well, the, oh, sorry, so ahead, and, that, and another thing is he's your captain. You, you don't really see that happen a lot in the National Hockey where the captain is traded. Well, unless it doesn't Montreal. happen. Montreal did it for a while, but yeah. I hear you. Yeah, and actually, well, Dean Lombardi, one of his first big trades was uh, Matthias Nordstrom, you know, our former captain, yep. was traded to, to Dallas. So it's happened before. I'm glad it didn't, 
because obviously he's putting the team on his shoulders right now, but I just we need everyone else to step up uh, and, and follow his lead. What's the dynamic been down there in Southern California this year? The Ducks have underachieved as well, but they've made a bit of a push uh, recently. And the next game, of course, for L.A. is this Saturday uh, at home. The Ducks are in town. It's still got a great dynamic going between those two teams. Yeah, absolutely. There's a great rivalry um, between, between the two teams, especially at Staples Center because you've got some real passionate Kings fans. And, and, and there's a thing... Uh, that happens every year where one of the bigger um, L.A. Kings fan community uh, bulletin boards like organizes a trip down into Anaheim and kind of takes over uh, the crowd there. <laughs> That's um, funny because my friend who lives in um, lives uh, Santa Monica Pier area, but he's a Ducks fan. He says it's all criminals there in L.A. He says, you know, those those dudes that beat up the guy with the San Francisco Giants hat, and that's not funny, obviously. That's a bunch of criminals. He said there's that element there. He prefers the Ducks. I don't know, man. Is that the truth? He's giving you a bad rap? Uh, the criminals are at the Los Angeles Dodgers game. Yeah, I believe that. Not at the Los Angeles Kings game. All right, all right. I thought so. I thought he was overstating. <laughs> okay, uh, you know, we got to get you on again. We have a limited time here, but I want to ask you, are you confident the Kings are going to make the playoffs? Because if you look at that, uh, Mr. Half, if you look at the race right now, it is tight there in the bottom echelon of the Western Conference. Uh, to me, there seems to be some bit of separation happening between uh, – Dallas and uh, I can't find my stats now. Who are the other two teams there, Peter? Dallas and changes uh, daily. Um, They're making distance between Calgary and uh, Anaheim and Colorado. Colorado, Colorado, Colorado thank you. Yeah, they won four in a row. Yeah. So uh, L.A., Colorado, and Dallas seem to be the four that are sprinting away in the middle pack. There. What do you think? Well, you're absolutely right. You got Phoenix has won six straight. Dallas has won four straight. Yeah, Phoenix Colorado's seems safe. And the Kings are kind of on this win one, lose one pattern. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know. For the first time in 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 two three years, I have not as a serious fan, thought this team can... I don't know if they can make the playoffs. And what I'm most worried about is their regulation wins. They only have 25 regulation plus overtime wins. You know, whereas a team like Dallas has 29. Uh, Colorado has one. Yeah, it could come back to bite them, right? They might be in the eighth spot, but, but, you know, they lose everything 2-1 to in a shootout, and and that might be what kills them this year. Good stuff. Let's get you on again. It's theroyalhalf.com. Thank you, sir. In the short time we have, we got to get them back on. Yo, you know what? If if you want guests out there and you're saying, hey, you don't cover my team, uh, warroom at nhlhomeice.com if you know a good blogger that you